yo what's up my name is rich welcome back to another video in this video right here we're just gonna do a quick uh t-shirt design but more important i'm gonna show you guys some tools that i may use during the t-shirt design hopefully you guys can pick something up um i already did the t-shirt design but i'm gonna try to backtrack from the very beginning and hopefully you'll be able to pick up some tips and tricks that can help you with your t-shirt design all right so here we go here we have adobe illustrator um first and foremost if you don't know anything about um Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is a vector based program and Photoshop is a raster based program. I'm going to use a mixture of the two. I did a lot of the designing in Photoshop so I can show you guys because um, I'm not great at putting raster versus vector into words, but hopefully that you're able to see it and you can see the difference. This is a raster image right now in Adobe Illustrator. My cousin Deluxe drew this for me. Appreciate you, Lux. And uh, it's a little ninja. As you can see, he actually drew this, I believe, on his iPad. But he saved it um, possibly like in a JPEG or a PNG. But it wasn't in an actual uh, vector-based format. So as you can see how the lines is not as crisp, that's because it's the raster. So the image is actually created by pixels and not points. So what we're going to do is take our little image right here. So here we have image trace. Um, I'm just going to leave it at the default settings, except I'm going to click ignore white. Then I'm going to hit trace. Right now it's going to um, analyze it and turn it into a vector based uh, format. And I'm going to hit expand at the very top. So now you can see it's created into points and you can see how it's not pixelated. Let me see if I can undo it so you can see zoomed in how it looked before. As you can see, this is how it looked before um, in pixels. Now we're going to vectorize it and, ha and now you can see it has a straight edge. So the difference between the two already, now I can resize this without losing any quality. I'm trying to make this super huge. Check it out. Still the exact same crisp lines within this image. So that's very important to know. Hopefully um, you can see the difference along with that. Um, so let me undo it real quick one more time. And this is right here. This is the JPEG format. It's a raster image. Watch what happens when I resize this. So I'm going to make it very large. And as you can see, if I can find it, it just even gets even blurrier and blurrier because you cannot resize a raster image uh, larger and maintain the same uh, quality. All right. So now we have our image. I'm going to take this uh, picture on over to Photoshop just so you guys can see. Um, this is the final product that we're going to end up in. I actually colored this in Photoshop, which you shouldn't do, but I'm a little more proficient in Photoshop so I can do it a little bit quicker. Um, but whenever you do it in such a large format, you can always take it back to Illustrator and do the whole image trace thing. But um, I'm saying a lot of butts here, but <laughs> I said it again. The point of the matter is I just want you all to see the difference between raster and uh vector but anyways if you're gonna design it in photoshop what i would highly recommend is to go ahead and make your dimensions in the same uh format and size of your actual t-shirt design so i'm gonna open up a new document and what we're gonna do is take our little measuring tape and actually measure ourselves damn my shirt is dirty why didn't anybody tell me and we're gonna actually measure or if you don't want to do that Type in on Google uh, t-shirt dimensions and it'll pretty much give you the common sizes. But for the most part, we're looking at about 12 inches and by like 16, 12 by 16. However, 12 usually for me is pretty large for a size small or a size medium. Um, I usually wear a size medium shirt. Um, so I like my designs about 11 inches, but 11 inches still doesn't look as bad even on a 2X, as long as the other side is pretty big. So, um, we're going to do about like 11 by 12 or so. Actually, we're just going to go ahead and do it 12 by 16, I believe. Actually, we're just going to go ahead and do it 12 by 12. So here I have 12 inches by 12 inches resolution, 300 DPI. So you want it extra crisp quality. Um, RGB means you're working on screen colors and CMYK means you're working with print colors, what comes out of the printer, okay? So for the most part, we're going to want to work in CMYK depending on our printing format um, for t-shirts. Uh, for the most part, if it comes out of the printer, you're going to want it in CMYK. But I know a lot of websites recommend that you upload in a PNG, which you have to uh, save in the RGB. 
So it can get a little confusing, but let's go ahead and do a CMYK, okay? So here we have it, a 12 by 12. Um, I went ahead and clicked paste. Now, smart object is still gonna keep its format from um, Illustrator where you can resize it, but as soon as you turn it into pixels, um, it's gonna lose its quality whenever you resize uh, larger once again. However, this is much more crisp than the photo that we had. So look at those lines, it looks good now. So the first thing I want to do with this image is I actually want to close up these gaps because I actually want to do a full color design. To be honest, it really doesn't even look that bad the way it is right now, I definitely like it. Okay, you know, I actually, I lied. I said I wanted to close up these gaps, but whenever you paste a photo from Illustrator to Photoshop, um, if it's a black image, it usually ends up being some kind of gray. So there's a few different ways that you can turn it into black. You can double click, um, go to your layer style, hit color overlay, turn it into black, or you can um, levels, move the output all the way to the side. Um, you can go to your hue saturation and then lower the lightness all the way. So either way works, you know, there's always more than one way to do things in Photoshop and Illustrator that is very important to know because there's really no right or wrong way to do things. Some, some ways may be faster than the other, but um, in the end, as long as you get the same results in a timely fashion, then you're pretty much good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna take the pen tool. The pen tool is super important in Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, it's going to be one of the most versatile tools. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and give a little click right here. And I'm going to go ahead and start dragging it in the direction that I want it to go. And now I'm going to click on the other end where I want it to be. And I'm also going to drag it so that you can create somewhat of a little bit of a curve right there. And if it's not perfect, you can always hit all on one of the points. I don't know the specific terms for all of these, even though I went to design school. Um, so you can click on control or alt. You can click around, especially if you're very unfamiliar with these programs. The most important thing to do is fail a lot. Just keep clicking around. If it doesn't work, undo. And then try it again. If it doesn't work, undo. Like that's the best way you're going to learn about these things. So um, I went ahead and overlapped it a little bit. And then I came over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and come back around. Click right here, drag in the direction I want to go. Click on the other side. Go ahead and do the same thing. So um, once I do that, basically I'm just creating a selection. I'm gonna right click, hit make selection. Um, I usually like to leave the feather radius 0.1 pixels. So it's not completely crisp and cut off. I don't really know how to explain this part. Um, not the greatest teacher guys, but that's how I like it set. But I hit okay. And what I'm going to do, um, I can do it on the same layer if I would like to if, of the actual ninja, but I like to leave the original layer alone, click on a new layer, and then I'm gonna hit G for the paint bucket tool. And then I'm gonna click on my color, drag it all the way down, hit black, boom, there you go. Now we have a nice closed off area. And all we're going to want to do is do the same thing for the rest of the areas. Like I said, there's more than one way to do this. Um, what we could have also did was we could take our brush and we can make it the same size or at least what it looks like the same size as was used for the original design. And then we could take our pen tool and go from the very middle of where this uh, path was. And then we can go on over here, right click, hit stroke path. And now um, we're gonna click the brush tool because that's what we selected our um, brush from and we hit okay. So we can kind of get the same effect. Um, the only reason why I don't like doing that is because we don't necessarily know the exact size. So sometimes it doesn't match up um, as awesome in the edges. So that's why I like to do it the other way. As you can see right here, I will need to come back and do something like this just to clean it up a little bit more. So. Like I said, any way works, whatever way works for you is going to be the best way. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and skip that step because we already did that part. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete everything and paste in one that we already did from the design itself. So now we're here, we have full solid portions. Now we're at the part where we should be coloring the design, which should be done in Illustrator but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it in Photoshop. Don't know why, I just happen to do that earlier because I was already starting on it and I was in the groove and I just went for it. But I'm back over here and I'm gonna take this color uh, gray uh, with the eyedropper tool. A quick little eyedropper tool key is using all or is, what button is it over here? I think it's command or something on the Mac. I'm not too sure. I click it so much, I don't even know what buttons I'm clicking. So come on over here. What I'm going to do is take our design. 
I'm gonna hit the wand. Make sure you don't have this button clicked. Contigu conti contiguous? Is that how you say it? <laughs> um, make sure you have that clicked so it only selects certain areas. So I'm gonna click on this area. I'm gonna click on this area. Since everything is closed off, it only selects those areas. I'm also gonna click on this area. Oh, my bad. I forgot to tell you hold shift. That way it also selects more than one area instead of letting go. And you can see in this little area right here what they used to call um ants. Um your selection is how two selection two areas are selected. One right here is selected and also one right here is selected. So what happens if I don't click shift is that right there. I click on this and I click on this, then the previous one wasn't clicked on. It's no longer clicked on or selected. Um so if I click on it and I hold shift, now I have both areas selected. Shift, shift 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 now i'm gonna create a new layer i already have one hit g from a paint bucket tool click on it and then we have those areas colored isn't that amazing so now we're gonna create a little bit of a shadow i'm gonna go back to the previous image and then i'm gonna just use the eyedropper tool again because i don't re recall what color i used and then how do we create the shadows there's more than one way to do this as well there's always going to be more than one way i'm gonna hit um new layer and i'm just gonna take the pen tool and i'm gonna do the same thing as how we closed off um the strokes earlier the paths so i'm gonna just select this area right here hit make selection and then i'm gonna hit our paint bucket tool boom What's going on right here, guys? What's going on right there? So what we need to do is we only want it on the circle part. So we could do a few different ways. Once again, we can click back on the uh, layer with just the, the major portion uh, colored. We can hit W. We can hit magic wand and select outside and hit backspace. Or we could also just come on over here, hit um, alt between the two layers. So that color only shows on that layer itself. Isn't that amazing? So all we got to do is rinse and repeat those steps and then we'll have a full color design. But like I said, we should have did an illustrator because in illustrator, we could have chose the actual colors like Pantone colors that a screen printer would be familiar with. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to take this whole thing on over to control all. We're going to head back on over to illustrator. Delete that. And now we have this paste it. Now look at that. It looks a little fuzzy, right? So we're going to. Pull up image trace once again, and in the mode, we're going to click color. Um, we only have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, eight, nine, around nine colors, 10, 11, 11 colors. So we could just make this 11 colors just so that it doesn't overdo it um, in this color selection right here. And then we're going to hit ignore white and hit trace and see what happens. And boom, it's beautiful. Look, it looks exactly like how we did it in Photoshop, but now it's in Illustrator, almost as if we did an Illustrator. So I'm just going to go ahead and head on over to the top, hit expand, and now it's going to separate all of our little layers as if we did it in Illustrator. Check this out. So now I'm going to hit V. Oh, check this out. Um, It's all one grouped layer. So what we need to do is ungroup it. I believe you just hit Control Shift G. Is that right? Let's check and see. Yep, that's correct. So now everything is nice and separated. Um, so you can actually change the colors of everything you wanted. So now um, what we're going to want to do, we're going to click on one of these colors right here. We're going to go ahead and click on that. We're going to go up to the top, hit window, um, go down to, okay, swatches, already have it selected. Right here in this bottom left, right here in the swatch window. Let's see, here we are. This little library button. We're going to look for, where is it? Color books. And then here we have Pantone. Pantone CMYK coded. PMK, what? I can't even speak. Pantone CMYK uncoded, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and go with CMYK coded. Um, at the very top, here we have just our actual CMYK right here. This is actually very close to just CMYK print is already. So we have the bandana that looks like cyan. We have the eye that looks like magenta. Um, the other die that looks like yellow. It's probably a little bit different. Let's go ahead and see. Click on this one. Make that scion. Oh, it is a difference. So um, here we have that scion. Going to click on the little shadow right here. And we're going to make it like a darker version as well. Maybe a little bit darker. There we have it. That's pretty good. So now we could do that for the rest of the colors. And boom, what do you have? We have the exact colors that we want. If we go ahead and uh, highlight over the Pantone, it tells you the exact Pantone color 
that it is selected. So that's a universal language that we have between ourselves, the designer, and the color that we see in hopes that it's the same as the color that's being printed by our screen printer or whatever format of printing they're using um, so that they see the same colors once it's printed. At least I think it's a universal language between the two. I don't know. It's been working for me um, and it's, it's been spot on colors. So feel free to fact check me. That's all good. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for that part. We have a whole ninja right now, full color. And uh, it's pretty simple. It's pretty cool. So I went ahead and took this ninja and turned to a full t-shirt design. It's actually going to go on a hoodie. Um, so there we have that right there. Hustle ninjas in the back. And then we have stay hungry. Um, I've been using that a lot. Don't know why. I think it's pretty neat that we started that from the first video on to here. Um, MMXIX, that's the year that I started YouTube, um, which is pretty cool way to always put uh, the year that you established. So if you wanted to put like 2020, put in Roman numerals. In a way, it doesn't make sense, but it's like a different format of you using the same text in a different fashion. So even though Photoshop is a raster-based program, what I wanted to show you is that text the actual text itself is in a vector format so photoshop is able to pick up on these types of things see i scaled it up and it still holds this nice little shape and uh all of that the nice little edges but what i'm gonna do is right click on that same layer i'm gonna hit rasterize and i'm gonna hit Control t to resize it and i'm gonna make it large once again and now see now it's scaling up a raster image instead of the actual uh vector based format of the print and now you can see where the edges are not clear in comparison to this other text that's right here so um i hope that helps you understand the differences between the two if not i'm sorry but um so yeah this is going to go on a hoodie um i can't decide y'all y'all need to let me know so we got the that print on the back and then we got the ninja i was gonna put it on the um the chest portion but it actually doesn't look that bad just like in the center nice and small um so y'all let me know between those two i really don't know and i hope this video helped y'all out y'all really i need y'all's help in commenting down below if this video helped you um because there's a few tools like using a pen tool and the simple things that may have been done that i'm just not sure if it's helping you all out but if it did comment down below i really need to know so i can start posting more videos like this but um of course i'll get the hoodies up on the website if you are interested in but that won't be into the next video because in the next video i'm going to show you how we can take this design and actually order some transfers and get ourselves a nice little heat press and press it onto the hoodie so i'll see y'all in the next video please comment down below let me know if this helps you out comment like subscribe and i'll see you soon